All right, guys, the stream is starting right now, a couple minutes till 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully you do join me for the stream tonight. Uh, drink of choice, if you were curious, we're going, I guess you call it old school, kind of, sort of, but it's classic, and we're going to be talking about some classic Coke. So please join me into the stream tonight. We have a lot to talk about. We're talking about the reveals that the thumbnail would have shown you guys when you got the email alerts. Take a look at it, make sure it looks good. I always take a look at it because I get the same alerts that you guys get. Make sure it looks all right. Take a look at it real quick here. Yeah, it looks good. I always have a, uh, I made another account so I can always, I follow myself so I can always see when these uh, alerts go up to make sure in fact that the alerts are in fact working properly. So we'll start the stream in about a minute or so. And we'll talk, a lot to talk about the thumbnail would have shown you guys, um, especially for G.I. Joe and, and Transformers fans. Hydrocritical, thanks for coming in. <laughs> thanks for coming in the stream tonight. I always test the, uh, make sure the stream works as far as the comments, because I've seen times where the comments won't show up on the uh, chat, which is that black bar you see on the right side of the screen. Um, for whatever reason, sometimes, a, hey, K. Titus, thanks for coming in. Konnichiwa. Um, lot to really talk about, um, which is very, very cool stuff. Um, since I got my two monitor deal going right now, so that I can I can pivot back and forth is much easier now than using my old tried and true tablet. <laughs> um, I had to kind of jury rig when I had a second monitor, and until I got another one. Hey, Jackie, thanks for coming into the stream tonight. Uh, a lot to talk about, a lot to discuss. Coming from Hasbro, especially uh, because of Fan Friday. This is a special event that happened last week. I think they've done it for the last couple weeks, and they have these big brand new reveals. And coming from Hasbro's side for both G.I. Joe and Transformers are some big reveals and a lot to talk about. So I'll start that shortly. Hey, Vincent, Dub uh, Dubious, thanks for coming into the stream tonight. Um, people have asked me as far as what am I picking up for San Diego Comic-Con. Um, I'm only going to pick up one item for the releases, and that was the uh, Funko uh, Nightcrawler. Hot Topic exclusive. That's what I want to get my hands on hopefully tomorrow when they drop. Uh, if you don't know that, all the San Diego Comic-Con Funko stuff will be dropping tomorrow. Uh, for most retailers that are shared exclusives, take a look at your Hot Topics later tonight, your FYEs, your Walgreens, um, your Walmarts <coughs> online. Those things will, should be dropping tonight. So, what is going on with you guys? So, let's talk about... Awesome, Kate Titus. Um, so let's talk about the big stuff that dropped from Hasbro on Friday. Again, this, this was called Fan Friday. Um, I'm going to switch over to my second monitor, and we'll talk about near the end of the video from ideas I want to kind of bounce off to you guys, the audience, um, to see if this is even a feasible idea, if it's something I should even bother doing. We'll talk about that after we go through all this other stuff first. Uh, no pickups. Um, I didn't pick anything up this week, so we're going to be switching straight over to my second monitor right now. All the links will be available in the, this particular, um, in, the, in the chat box. So we're talking about this one first. If you wanna follow along, all the links will in fact be in the, when the video on demand goes up, it will all be there. There is again a big delay when the video on demand does go up. Why there's like a 24 hour delay, I can't tell you. Normally I would say prior to when YouTube has gone through at least from last year when I was doing streaming, the video on demand would go up maybe 30 to an hour later. I've been seeing it delayed for about close to between 12 and 24 hours. So <coughs> you should be able to get to it via the email link. So keep your eyes on the email links. Hey, Optibot, uh, Optimus, thanks for coming into the stream tonight. We're talking G.I. Joe and Transformers. Uh, and I posted a link. If you want to look at the chat, you should be able to see that link. So first we're looking at Action Figure Insider. They're very reputable. They have very, very solid information. So that's what we're looking at first. So first we're looking at this really awesome new uh, Cobra Commander. This was a show exclusive at one time, but they kind of rolled it into the new classified um, selection. Price point for this guy, I think he's $29.99, but I could be wrong on the price. But he looks gorgeous. He looks so cool. The packaging is what I want to bring to your guys' attention over here. Let me move me out the way because that would be professional if you can see what it looks like. What I like about this right here, this, this box, it normally looks like this packaging here. They showcase this off in the video. You basically kind of part it in the middle and the figure would be pushed forward. Very, very cool design how they did that. It's very, very neat. 
but I believe this was a show exclusive at one time. Uh, it's in the six inch scale part of the classified series. This is Cobra Commander in his really cool, elegant looking robe. Let me move me back now. Um, back to where I was. This is a really cool, elegant robe that Cobra Commander has. He's got the Earth right here. He's got the Cobra Scepter. He's got a closed hand, a pointing finger. He's got a cool pistol and a Cobra sword like, um, I guess, snake staff, snake headed sword or knife. Looks <coughs> really, really cool. Looks really, really neat. Love what they did with that figure. Looks awesome. I believe, yeah, price point I was right, $30. It's going to be available September uh, 2020. Uh, the art came from Sana Takada. Um, that's going to be, I believe, at the Pulse store. I believe it's up for pre-order. It probably has sold out by now. Next, let's take a look probably at the biggest news coming out of the... Uh, out of that uh, Fan Friday thing that, that Hasbro launched was this brand new, really awesome retro collection figures. These are basically, I'll, kinda, I'll pick on a picture so you can see what it looks like. They took the, I think it was called the G.I. Joe 25th Anniversary. This is this Snake Eyes figure right here without the additional head, um, if you're curious. But it has every bit of gear that figure had. This is probably the most stacked Snake Eyes figure ever made in a three-quarter scale, a, a three and three-quarter scale as far as accessory goes. He's got three swords. He's got his explosive satchel, two pistols, two knives, two scabbards, a machine gun, his Uzi, two silencers. He's just loaded to the gills. What makes this figure very, very cool is that they use the old retro, the old vintage Snake Eyes uh, uh, cover art package, packaging but they use the 25th anniversary version of the Snake Eyes figure. That's what makes this really, really cool. The figure itself looks like this. This is such a cool figure. I have both one of these on card and off of card. And all that gear, with the exception, I think, of one pistol and maybe one knife, every bit of that gear can be held on that character, on that figure. It is probably the coolest Snake Eyes figure ever made. Yes, he has these stupid rubber band things attached to the bottom of his like the bottom of the character itself you could probably you can take this vest off this vest is removable the harness can be removed but these uh, rubber bands these rubber they're like elastic bands that are hooked to the bottom of the character i hate that i don't know why they kept it on the figure it just looks bad but this is the of course the com not the commando head but the uh, visored head the commando head would have, of course been uh this one right here this would be the commando head but that's the visor head. You can put him in really good positions. Looks really, really cool. Um, him with his sword out, gun. And again, those bands. I just This throws it off for me right here. I don't know what the deal is with those bands. Next, of course, they have is Storm Shadow. If you're curious, the pricing is $12.99. It will be available in October 2020. Uh, <coughs> I could tell you about a day ago, excuse me. <coughs> All the figures were, were sold out on pre-order except Snake Eyes. They're probably going to be just flooding with Snake Eyes when those packages. I, I, I would bet because that's going to be the most uh, sought-after figure. Then we have uh, Storm Shadow. This Storm Shadow, of course, is the retro packaging, the vintage packaging they used, just with the updated version of Storm Shadow. Uh, again, packed with gear. This figure I never purchased because I wasn't just a, I wasn't a fan of this figure. I believe they did something new with the head sculpt. I think that was changed and retooled a little bit. Yeah, uh, uh, Vincent, I think it would be good for photography. But this guy is loaded to bear. I mean, he's got his fan. He's got, you can take this white sash off and have the red sash. You can have the nunchucks. You can have the bear claws. You can have two different swords, a bow. Both swords slot into the backpack. You can put the arrow in the backpack. You have him drawing the bow if you wanted to. And he, of course, has a Storm Shadow stand. The other one, of course, the Snake Eyes had the stand as well. This is kind of what it would look like um, if they're posing it around. Again, they're looking at the old uh, blast backdrop that they had in the old vintage figures. It looks really, really good. Another shot of uh, Storm Shadow right here. Also coming out, again, this is three and three quarter inch wave figures. These are not the six inch figures. These are standard, normal G.I. Joe scaled figures back that we saw back in the mid 80s. Same scale. Then we have a very, very cool Baroness. Again, retro package, vintage packaging of Baroness here. She's got her old bomb uh, satchel here that she had before, probably containing, I'm assuming if you crack it open. I was just watching on uh, YouTube a little while ago, 
all the five part series of the old mass device for GI Joe is on YouTube and I was, they're streaming live to it. I think inside this briefcase has three canisters or it might have been Destro, but it has three canisters for the mass device. Very, very cool <coughs> old feeling to it. Yeah, uh, Optimus, absolutely. At 12 and change, this is way worth it. You're getting an old school card. You're getting, but a, you're getting an old school card design, but with more of a uh, more modern base figure. Because I believe the 25th anniversary figures came out, <coughs> or 35th anniversary, one of the two, uh, came out I think in 2014, 2015. So they're modern esque versions of GI Joe. So, but she's loaded to bear. So if you look at all her gear, she is packed with gear. A ridiculous amount of gear. Grappling hook, two different machine guns, a machine pistol. Uh, they don't show the case opening, so I'm assuming the case may be the mass device elements, but I cannot be sure about that or not. So but it looks great. Again, $12.99. This is kind of what she would look like. Baroness in her typical outfit with the big spike heels. She's got to have her heels. That's typical Baroness. Looks great. Love the figure. Again, with the uh, sort of sniper rifle, sniper rifle, pistol, uh, sniper rifle, not pistol, sniper rifle right there in that shot. She came with a machine pistol. That's the word I'm looking for. Not only do they have three quarter inch figures, but we have classic vehicles as well. Yeah, that's true. We have classic vehicles in the retro design of that Cobra His Tank. That's right. The original His Tank. With the hiss driver, with Cobra Commander sticking himself on the back over here, this is the old school, with the file card. Now, I didn't talk about this. On the back of each one of these guys, you have the classic file card. I didn't show the back of the packaging. But you would get something similar to like this over here. You will get a file card on the back of each of the characters. Um, classic design for the hiss tank. You're going to ask me, Rook, does the hiss tank roll? Absolutely. It does roll. You have two vehicles. You have the hiss tank. And you have the Aw Striker. It, uh, the Aw Striker does have the big cable antennas here, and it has uh, the suspension like they had back in the day. The front wheels will bounce, and they have movement. They showed that in the video. Um, I think it was crankcase on this one. Yeah, it was crankcase. So that's what it looks like here. The gun moves. The front axles left and right will move. There is suspension with it. It looks great. Some more pictures of it here. Awesome, awesome. Awesome stuff for action figure when it comes to G.I. Joe at a three-quarter inch scale. Now let's talk, because we have Transformers fans here, let's talk Transformers. A lot of stuff dropped on Fan Friday for that as well. Let me pop this open here so we can see what we have. So first thing we have is some, uh, we have at the top here is a brand new Bumblebee. Uh, brand new Bumblebee here. Uh, looks great. Looks great. I think this. I think this is Bumblebee, but I could be wrong on it. Or this could be no. This is a, this is the Netflix Bumblebee, which they take a lot of tooling and they take a lot of deco from the Cliff Jumper figure from Earth Rises. He got his back of his vehicle. He's got Cliff Jumper's huge, massive cannon right here. Um, we have Alita One, which is the Netflix version of her. She's been retooled, uh, a heavy retool based off RC. Uh, looks great. Uh, we have here Impactor. Right there. Uh, this is in the, from War of Cybertron. There's also a... that's uh, We'll get to that guy in a second. I don't think they have a picture, but there is a Wheeljack that they had, which they talked about, which has battle damage. There's a Red Alert that they had, which has battle damage. Again, this was Impactor with the correct head. This one here is... We'll get to him in a second. That was Exhaust, Grease Pit, and... Uh, uh, excuse me, that was Hubcap. Grease Pit and uh, Exhaust here, which is a retooling of Wheeljack. Then we have a mystery box. This is a mystery box. Yep, uh, this is a mystery box coming out. I They haven't said what this is going to be a leader class. They haven't said what this one is. They had when it came out in the first wave. This is, I guess you call it wave two. The first wave was Ultra Magnus. This one, they don't know yet. They haven't said who it's going to be. Then we have our boy here, Laserbeak. And with Laserbeak, you have Ravage. But of course, you have Laserbeak and Ravage. You gotta have Soundwave. Soundwave, of course, classic design, classic look here. Tape deck looks great. Now, one thing they haven't talked about is these guys. Let's get to them right now. 
right here we have a first look at ramjet and get them here we have prime i had a picture of them i just lost the picture it's grapple it was ramjet and dirge i don't know if you can see it right there we have ramjet and dirge right there the cone heads and then you have ironhide and prowl so this is again part of the earth rises set this is a two pack um, I believe these are Amazon exclusives. Price point, I want to say it was, I think it was $40 or $50 US for those guys. So, really cool stuff. Very, very happy that they brought this around. Uh, then we'll take a look real quick here at Pulse, which is, we have some legend stuff here. This is the stuff we were just talking about. We had the exhaust character for $20. We had, of course, Hubcap exhaust and grease pit uh, we had top gun which we talked about before the sentinels have i think sold we talked about him in the last week's stream he sold he i think he's had eleven thousand backers right now but i think he only had three tiers uh correct me if i'm wrong on that annie i believe there's only three tiers and people were upset because i think they were expecting more that would be unlocked but i think it will only go up to level three uh, a three tier unlock and I think people, it was either misunderstood that there'd be more stuff or it would cap out at three. So people were upset about that. We have another Cobra Commander. We talked about him last week. Uh, very cool looking design for Cobra Commander. Looks really, really cool. Love the design of Cobra Commander. And we have, of course, that gold Destro that we've talked about before. Last we want to talk about is something very cool. Let me put this in the stream so you guys can see it. Again, all these links will be in the video on demand. Next is the new G.I. Joe Classified Cobra Island Special Mission Set. Uh, this was, I'm gonna, I think it's going to be a Walmart exclusive uh, or Target, one of the two. This might be a Target exclusive. But this is an exclusive set. Excuse me, this is at Target. This set is going to be exclusive at Target. You're going to have Baroness, Beachhead, Cobra Trooper, and another Roadblock. So let's take a look at the Baroness. The Baroness looks really, really cool in this bike she comes with her bike these two weird machine guns a snake uh looks like a helmet and a knife in in this set this is kind of what it would look like so you has got the really cool bike the bike looks something kind of like akira to me that's what this bike sort of looks like looks good i like her guns she does come with two golden guns too so i'm go back and see if she, yeah she has two golden guns which i didn't talk about so she has two golden guns two big honking machine guns a snake a knife Either this is going to be an additional head sculpt, like a, a swappable head, so you can put the, I guess, the uh, helmet, the, the, the biker helmet on her. One of the two. The head sculpt looks different than the Baroness we've seen before, um, but I, I, I don't know if she's in the six-inch scale yet. I know in a three-inch scale, it looks a little different. Then we have Beachhead. Love the Beachhead character, but I'm not a fan of the green weapons. I don't like the green weapons. Uh, he does come with his beret, a crossbow, a machine gun, a pistol, and a knife. Uh, looks really, really cool. Let's take another shot of him over here. That's kind of what he looks like with the beret. Again, looks kind of weird. I don't know what to make of it. We kind of move it down a little bit so you can kind of see what it would look like. But it looks weird. I, I don't know. I think it's the green stuff. I, I think it's the green uh, weaponry, which is kind of throwing me off. But I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Next, let's take a look at a Cobra Trooper. This is an Army Builder figure. So if you're into... Ramjet looks really good. They did a good job on Ramjet. Because uh, he is the leader of the Coneheads. Um, we have the Cobra Trooper with coming with a ridiculous amount of gear. Um, I like that when you get a lot of gear for the characters. It does look really, really cool. Um, neat looking Cobra Trooper. When you get him out of the packaging, he would look sort of like this. So he comes with, um, I don't know if you can get that last bit on the bottom here. He comes with this weird, I guess it's maybe a, uh, somebody gets attached to his arm, I would say, or his leg. So I think that looks really, really cool. A honking gun, two pistols, another machine gun. Um, I'm assuming this is either an additional head or it will somehow attach to the figure itself. So I'm guessing it's probably a swappable head. Those are six inch Optimus. This is the this is the classified series. This is wave, I guess you call it wave three. 
Technically, it would be wave three, I believe. Come on, take a look here. This is part of what they call the uh, classified Cobra Island mission set. These are all six-inch scale figures. I believe they're six-inch scale. I would assume they're six-inch scale. Yeah. If it's part of the classified series, it has to be. And the last but not least is another roadblock. So we have different roadblock, different deco with this huge honking gun. So a different roadblock than we saw before. I don't know why we haven't gotten, let's say, rock and roll. You'd think we'd get a rock and roll instead of a second roadblock. But whatever. It is what it is. Um, I think it was very, very cool that they are giving us that. Especially that Baroness. I like that Baroness. This one, I think, I don't know if they gave us a price on that one per se. Again, this is going to be <coughs> Target exclusives on these. Um, I'm not seeing any other pricing on this guy yet. Uh, I know that his tank, we'll bring it up real quick here. His tank talked about this, which is you know, kind of where we're at anyway. So they, it's just linked back to itself. So this is linked to itself. So yeah, very, very cool. Definitely like this army builder stuff. Apologies for any sound you may hear. Um, it's raining right now by me. So those are all the big releases that are happening as far as uh, Hasbro goes. Now Hasbro has one other thing to talk about. So hopefully I can find it. Um, let's take a look here. It would be... I don't know if they're going to talk about it here. But there's a bunch of brand new Black Series stuff. I, I wanted to see if I can dig into it but i might not have the links to it right now so uh it's this new endor set let me see if i can find it here uh black series uh star wars endor let's see if we can find it real quick here there it is so here's kind of what it would look like so this is a brand new black series they call it the uh they're heading to from Hoth to Endor. Kind of what it looks like. They have a new Wampa. If I can scroll the page down. I'm waiting for the page to load. Here's the Endor. You get a uh, Ewok. With a speeder bike. And you have a Luke and Leia. I don't know what the deal is. I'm guessing this is three quarter scale. But I could be wrong. I'm not 100% here on that. So you get four fully articulated limbs per figure. Figure set featuring quality detail and deco. Figure set also comes with Star Wars Return of the Jedi inspired speeder bike. That makes a great addition to any Star Wars collection. Four figures, speeder bike, and six accessories. Exclusive on Hasbro Pulse going up on September 20th. Uh, it's probably just uh, buffering for a second. It'll, it'll pick back up. It'll just, it'll fix itself. It's just some latency. These are nice. Clone, uh, look like they're doing Clone Wars for five the 501st Legion Arc Trooper set, three pack. They look great. It looks like Captain Rex's, but this is part of the 501st. The, I don't know what's that, something with the, the Luke and Leia just looks weird to me. This is highly articulated, highly detailed figures, but something looks off. Uh, it looks like the fourth set will include a speed bike accessories will be available, Hasbro Pulse. It'll cost $109 for that set. I, I don't know, something throws me with this series. I, I don't know if it's six inch scale or three and three quarter scale. The figures look tiny. So I'm guessing three and three, no, they are six inch. They don't look six inch to me. And then they have, this is what the uh, 501st Arc Legion set looks like. Echo, Fives, and Jesse. Um, I don't know about this. This is the vintage. So this is probably three and three quarter for those ones. So yeah, I thought I'd bring that up as well. So let me switch back over to my stuff here, guys. Boom, perfect. Let me bring this back over to my screen. There we go. All right, so the last bit I wanted to talk about is an idea I have, and I want to make a new segment for the channel, and I wanted to bounce this off to some of my more uh, people who watch more of my stuff. A lot of people who are in the stream right now watch a lot of my content. So my thought process is I want to develop a new segment for the for the show that would be another sort of review segment 
but I want to do it a little bit differently and I want to put stuff classified into it for a different, um, a, a different sort of medium. And the idea is I want to come up with a name first off, first off and see if, I, if, if it even works. So I, I do want to do a throwback to, let's say, a little bit older set of toys or collectibles. Uh, stuff that could be, let's say, let's say late 2000s, but not modern stuff. So the, so the problem running into is if you look at, let's say, older toys or older collectibles, you would have ones that would fall into, let's say, the term vintage. Vintage would be like your late 70s, your, let's say, your late, uh, maybe your, some of your G.I. Joe stuff. Uh, some of the collectibles in the late 70s, Star Wars in the three and three quarter inch scale, some of the old Kenner stuff uh, in that realm. But that's usually termed vintage. Then I said, well, what if I do something retro? Well, retro is more 80s and early 90s. That would be your traditional Transformers, your traditional G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Robots in Disguise, G1 stuff. That would be more retro. Uh, so I'm looking for a name to call this video segment. So the idea is what I'm going with is I might call this series Flashback. Where I'm going to flash back to not something that's super old, more newish, but it could be something that might be a little old. I have the ability to do something like that. Uh, as far as what I, how I would, what the review style would be yet, I'm not 100% sure yet how I want to review it. I don't know if I want to review it the same way I've reviewed before, where I would talk about something, have an intro, I would go close up to it, I would talk about the packaging, then I would unbox it, talk about the, the item, articulation, accessories, and have a conclusion. I might do something similar to it, but kind of lump those reviews in the flashback under that umbrella. So then, if you like the flashback content, you'll be seeing things like that. You'll be seeing a little bit older toys. It might be stuff that's, let's say, mid-2000s. It could be early 90s. But out of the term retro, so it'd be past that. I can't call it modern, because it's not. It's it's in the modern-esque realm, but it could be in the late 90s, too. So that's where I'm j jockeying with this, this dilemma. It's, it's going to be a very, very interesting idea. I'm going to probably review it the same sort of way I've been doing it before, Vincent. Uh, I'll probably have, like, on the top corner, like over here of the screen, like over here, there might be a banner that'll say flashback. So when you see the thumbnail, you know, oh, it's part of, of his flashback series when he's doing these reviews. It's sort of like a retro, kind of, sort of. But it's, I can't call it retro because some of the things might not be retro. So I don't want to, to de I don't want to classify it in something where it's not. Where people will be saying, well, Look, you're not doing these, these. This isn't a retro toy. So I can't call it retro if it's not retro. If it was, you know, <coughs> 90s, it would make sense. And that's the issue I've been dealing with. <coughs> so that's my, <coughs> my idea I want to try to bounce off to the audience. Is it even valid to do something like this? You might think, well, that's just, that's just nomenclature. That's just the verbiage. You can review anything you want. That's true, but I want to kind of, put those reviews into its own bucket now. Very similar to how I do my Rook 180 stuff. When you see a Rook 180 video go up, you know I'm talking about small blind boxes. You know what you're going to get. You may not watch all the content, but you're gonna know you'll be watching a blind box speed review. That's what you know you're gonna get. So if you're watching flashback, you know you'll be watching something that can be a little older and maybe a little modern as well. That's the idea. And this will be stuff that I wanna take out of packaging. I don't want to keep it on card. That's one thing I want to, and, and a lot of big YouTubers will talk about this, and, and it's a good point. If you buy toys, play with your toys, display your toys. You don't have to leave them on card all the time if you don't want to. Um, a lot of YouTubers out there will talk about that. I, I'm, I'm in both camps. I like both sides of it. Certain times I will unbox my stuff and leave it on my shelf. Certain times if I know if it's a pretty expensive collectible, I might just leave it on card. Just because in case I want to trade it or sell it down the road, I have that option as well. Things like blister packaging, uh, the old G.I. Joe stuff, for example. When you pop that bubble open, rip it, off, rip it apart to take out the packaging, it's gone. You can't put it back on the card. A lot of, let's say, Funko stuff or a lot of even the Black Series, you can repack that stuff if you wanted to. Anything over 20 years is retro. Uh, yes and no, because the problem I'm going to run into, if I did... Let's say I do 2010. 2010 is not retro. 
2010 is more modern. But it, it's, I can't really put it into a category and call it a modern review. It just would sound, it wouldn't sound right. It wouldn't have the same weight I'm looking for. That's the problem I'm, I'm looking <laughs> Rook's retrospective. It could be something like that. I, I use my name on a lot of stuff. I, I, I might just call it, the, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of weighing towards flashback. Because it could be, I can, I can peg it for anything. I'm flashing back to a certain point in time. So I don't have to call it retro or vintage or modern. It can be anything. And that's the, uh, the idea or the niche I'm trying to dig into. So I can, when I do this review, it would be about that thing. It could be something that was three years ago, four years ago, last month eight years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and still work as an all-encompassing term. That's what I'm looking for. And I think that will work in this, in this avenue I'm trying to take. I think it will make sense. Now, as far as reviewing it, do you guys like how I do my reviews, especially my action figure stuff? Do you like an intro? Do you like a breakdown? Do you like talking about the packaging? Do you like the unboxing? Do you like showcasing the item off to the camera? Do you like the final thoughts? That's how I shoot my content. I've been doing it for nearly four years now, and it's worked for me. Um, I don't know if I want to, you know, turn it on its head a little bit. You don't, you know, you 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 use what you you use what works for you, and that has worked for me. I'm kind of used to that review style. Um, I go and when I move in, if you might notice, the studio looks very very bare right now. Uh, again, I'm getting close to my move, so this shelf right here. And about three days is going to be gone. Everything's moving into the new house. So uh, there's not going to be anything in this room in, in a few short days. So the new studio is coming together. Um, that will be Rook's Rewind. That's an idea too. I don't know if I, how I want to call it yet. I don't know. Um, I will jot down all ideas. I'm just writing down ideas now, and we have Rook's Rewind. <sighs> so that, that that those are good names. Do you like how the Do you like how the reviews work? Do you want to see any? Well, let me ask this question. Let me ask a different question. I also wanted to inquire about something. This dream. Might you consider reviewing? I, I have seen Godzilla toys, Vincent. I don't personally own any. Not that I say that I wouldn't buy any. I do like Godzilla. I, I'm, I'm not, quote, unquote, a super fan. I know the character. I know some of the lore for him. Um, I think Godzilla is a very, very cool character. I've seen many of them, especially at Target's. All over the place, different versions of Godzilla, different scales of Godzilla. I might review something down the road because I don't personally own any Godzillas. Um, I, I try to, Optimus. Also, I try doing things a little differently than most reviewers. I, I First of all, when someone calls me out on something wrong, I'm mad enough to say I screw something up. I'm not shy to say I done screwed up. I done messed up. That'd be the first thing. I try to make my reviews better than the last review. Also, I do not shoot in a light box. I don't like doing it. I think it's more personal when you can see me, see my face, see my hands. You might only see my from chest, you know, chest down, but you hear me, you know it's me. I'm, there's very famous YouTubers, Opt Optimus Prime, uh, Optobotamus, uh, Shadimus Prime, those guys are big, well-established Transformer guys in the community. I give those guys all the credit in the world. It took me, no joke, to transform the... Uh, I had my Blue Streak, the masterpiece my girl got for me, the blue version of Blue Streak, which is about $125. That particular one, that was transformed, it took me 45 minutes to transform him back from robot to car. That's how long. I am not the guy when it comes... To, to, to trying to do reviews on camera when it comes to Transformers. I suck at it. I enjoy them, but I suck at it. That's why I don't review Transformers. There are guys out there who are well more skilled, uh, Pia, well more skilled than I am. And I like watching their stuff. And they can, he can go in a light box and he can do it. More power to the guy. That's not me. 
That's not how I shoot content. I shot my very first videos in a light box and I absolutely hated it. My Gothitropolis reviews, one of my Kyle Rayner figures, one of the first, uh, the Mattel Multiverse Kyle Rayner, hated those reviews, despised them. I hated having a camera over my shoulder, my hands in a light box. It looked bad. It looked it looked unprofessional. It looked horrible. I didn't know what I was doing, but it didn't look good. And that's why I don't shoot content that way. And I started watching a couple other YouTubers. I took bits and pieces out and sort of amalgamated them together to make my own style. And it works for me. That's how I try doing it. I tend to do it that way. Rook's Rewind is an idea. Is an idea as well. That I, I like that idea. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. I, I think reviewing it the way I've been reviewing it sort of works. And it's going to be a little bit more different now when I go into this new studio. It's going to be a lot louder. It's going to be a lot brighter because there's more lights in that studio. The room is going to be lit up. It's not going to be sort of dank and dark anymore. It's going to be a lot more light. It's going to be much bigger. Uh, when you'll see the studio, like when I shoot behind the backdrop, you see this black shelf here? There's literally three of them that are going to be lined up across the entire wall with a Green Lantern Curio cabinet on the side, which will be my Green Lantern core and my Yellow Lantern, my Sinestro core. Um, when I get the studio put together where it's viewable, I'm going to be shooting a video for that. I did unbox my Jon Stewart uh, premium format figure, the statue. It's put together. I'm going to shoot the review for that. And, of course, the Sideshow collectible Batman v Superman, which I'm going to be getting probably in a few weeks. That's going to be going into a really cool Kiro cabinet when we put it together. Uh, it's, it's a super cool statue. I showcased it last week. Uh, that's going to be probably with the first set of reviews as well as the studio tour to showcase off kind of what the new studio is going to be looking like and how all the videos going forward will always look. It'll look like how I did it in my old apartment, very similar to it. You'll see me across from my table shooting it very similar, not shooting in front of my computer like you see here, just because of lack of space. And I have my workstation over here behind me because of COVID. I have no room in here to break that down and then shoot and put it back up again. It would take way too much time all the time to do that. So that's kind of what's going to be the idea going forward. I think it's going to be a good idea doing this, this flashback series, Rook Retrospective or Rook Rewind. Um, either way, it's going to be a, a, a throwback to older figures. So um, especially when I go and I pick up some older stuff that I know for a fact I want to review. And I didn't have an outlet to really review it under. I, I, I can review an action figure, but it did feel like its own thing. I want to group it to its own thing, not just something that's new or modern. Uh, a lot of people might like about, you know, like an old figure that never has been reviewed before. I've seen a lot of stuff. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that I've been looking on my channel. Like, for example, my Dritz review for Funko. No one shot a video for that. Why? I don't know. I was the only one who shot a review video for Dritz, the Funko figure. Very, very odd when no one shot any videos for that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's random color. Um, every once in a while, it happens to be OBS's will just put a particular color up. It wasn't my intention. Um, you can go through their site and have tweaks to it, and you can tweak certain portions and, and make certain things happen. I just leave it as it picks a select default color, and that's how I leave it. That's how it usually works. I haven't messed with OBS in a long, long time as far as like the detail setting from Streamlabs. I don't mess with it. Um, I set it up with uh, Cletus you know, a year and a half ago, and I haven't messed with it since. Also, we'll be doing some, if you ask me, do I have any Predator toys? I absolutely do. Um, but again, I'm not a big fan of NECA. I have lots of issues with their quality control. I've had many problems with them. So, this one at least was my third attempt at the jungle, pre at the, at the, con uh, that city Predator, I think it was called. Not the jungle Predator, but the city Predator. So, I do love NECA's design. And I do like the way they look, but they're well known to have massive quality control issues. And that's one of the reasons I don't buy a lot of NECA stuff is because I know there's problems or I'm, it, it, I, I'm sort of, I've been pigeonholed because of so many issues with NECA. I'm expecting it to go bad. 
I'm not expecting to get a good figure. And that's my only issue I've had, Annie. Uh, just to give you kind of a little breakdown real quick of this guy, I was trying, I was going to do a review with him about two years ago, two and a half years ago, and I scrapped the review. And the reason for that is this figure I bought at a comic store, brand new on the shelf, had issues with the shoulder cannon, issues with the, the bomb plate here. Now, if you look over here, the little bomb plate, this little bit right here, this little piece that pops out, see the paneling right here? On the very first time I tried opening that panel, the entire panel broke. And he didn't come with the little peg right here. I, his spear's off of him right now. And his disc on a second version was gummy and it was not cut properly. To get a new figure uh, after the bomb plate issue, the bomb plate scenario, uh, the, bomb plate, the bomb plate snafu, they sent me an entire arm. I had to heat it up with a hair dryer and rip the entire arm off to replace the arm because this arm here, because of this bomb plate that you see right there, that bomb plate right here, it's all one piece. So if this fails, this entire arm is now useless with this part. So it's unfortunate it happens that way. I have not yet found the Raph and uh, Casey Jones yet when I've looked around for him. I've not seen them. I know that people have reported seeing it, but I have not yet seen it. But the issue I have with, with NECA, I, I, it leaves a very, very sour taste in my mouth to go and get more NECA stuff because I'm expecting it to go bad. I've not had success yet with NECA in any figure I've purchased. I've had this, that, this would have been the, uh, I, uh, I, I bought two Predators, same figures, same store, uh, different lots. They had different lot numbers. I guess they had different lot numbers, um, but uh, I don't know if they had different lot. I think they might have had different lot numbers, but I could be wrong. Uh, but this guy was just known to have problems. And it's unfortunate because he looks so damn cool, but it is what it is. It did happen that way, and it's unfortunate. Ever look into any Jurassic Park or Jurassic World figures? I've seen them all the time in Walmart. Tons of them. Lots of them. Um, not a big fan of Jurassic Park. I know a lot of people that are into the dinosaur stuff. Not my sort of thing. Uh, but not my collectible. Usually the stuff I'm into, um, I used to collect lots of G.I. Joe, lots of Transformers. Uh, I, I pivoted from that to get into Funko. I still have lots of action figure stuff, though, because I got into Black Series, uh, mainly in the six-inch scale. I wasn't interested in the vintage stuff in the three and three-quarter. Uh, that's not my thing. I, I'm not a fan of the smaller figures. I like the Black Series figures. I like the six-inch six scale. The G.I. Joe stuff um, was mainly Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. A few vehicles here and there. Uh, that was the stuff that I was into. Again, some Transformers, I said before, my... First Transformers I ever collected as a kid was Skywarp, Cliffjumper, um, Sunstreaker, and Blue Streak were the four Transformers that I had as a kid. And those are ones I sort of gravitate towards. Um, I've seen the new Cliffjumper Earth Rises. I've had that figure in my hand about three times. I have yet to pull the trigger on that figure. Um, I don't know why because I, I think a part of me is fearful to buy it because I don't want to go down that road again and getting into Transformers. I don't want to go there. I like having the ones I have because uh, I have a lot of stuff from G1 stuff, uh, a lot of the Combiner War stuff. I have tons of Combiner War stuff. That was stuff that I liked. I don't like all this new stuff. It, I'm not a fan of the battle damage stuff, the, the uh, War of Cybertron. I don't like it. I don't like the way the paint apps look. I don't like the way they look at all. That's not my thing. Will do, Annie. But we're coming up to 945, guys. I want to thank everybody who came into the stream tonight. I'm going to cut it off. I want to thank everyone for their ideas about the new segment. Um, I'm still debating the name of it. We have some names, at least. Feel free to email me. It. You can get me at rookgeekgoodness at gmail.com. I'll drop it into the stream. If you want to email, you're more than welcome to. Um, you can always follow me on Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm there. Uh, my links are always in the chat. It's uh, the, the, the description box of the video. They're always about the about the help section of the channel. That's where you can find me if you're looking to uh, 
send me any information or any ideas. If you want to send anything to me to review, you're more than welcome to, but I let me know if you're going to because I discontinued using my P.O. Box. I stopped using the P.O. Box. I wasn't getting any stuff through the P.O. Box. It wasn't worth it to have a P.O. Box that's still active when I'm not getting any mail. So I decided to get rid of cancel it. If anybody wants to send me anything, you're more than welcome to. If you want to send me fan art, I love it. If you want to send me any letters, I always uh, keep it. I do not throw anything away. I keep everything, all drawings, anything people have written to me, I keep it in a box for the channel. I do not get rid of that stuff. It means a lot to me. That means you take the time to either draw something or write to me. That means that what I do here means something to somebody. Uh, you've taken your time to watch my content, watch my streams. That's very important to me. So, guys, I want to thank you all. We're going to be coming up to 945. I want to thank everybody who came into the stream tonight. We'll be cutting the stream in three, two, one. Take care, guys. Night, night, and bye-bye.